Hi, my name is Kirsten Johnson. Welcome back to my subscribers. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications of upcoming videos. I've come a long way since alcohol addiction and anxiety disorders, but the truth is I still have far to go. Like the rest of us, I have many doubts and fears and as a result have been sitting on some big dreams for way too long. Not anymore. It's wild how normal it is for the brain to not live, to trap us in our own fear, our own limited beliefs and thinking, where we don't actually show up for our lives fully. We don't decide to live. And that's why I brought you here today, is because I am deciding to live. Uh, again, another decision to live at a greater capacity. I know um, a lot of us who have businesses, especially online, if you're like me and in the coaching business or an aspiring speaker and writer, it's alone. A lot of it is alone and by ourselves. I think it's uh, important to really look at, am I actually living the life that I want to live? And to really go all in, to go all in on showing up for life and living fully. Maybe you're also an aspiring speaker and writer and author and you got a message in your heart and you've been through something major, a major transformation, and you're here to help transform the world. How? How do you bring your message into the world? We're going to be finding out together so we act in alignment with our vision. We don't wait for everything to feel good. Like if this is our comfort zone, out here is our dream, right? So we got to expand and into it. You're going to be my BFF as I am outside my edge and showing up like I mean it. And so for me, that's going to be looking like publishing a book and learning how to be a speaker. I'm really happy to have you here. Ah, so gorgeous, so gorgeous. What I've noticed about myself, and maybe you've noticed this about you too, is that I do a lot of planning and basically waiting to live, thinking that I'm preparing myself to actually do the thing. When I look back in hindsight, there was so much preparation and not a lot of doing the things. I have been writing for seven years, which is a little bit embarrassing because I've never published a book. Seven years ago, I woke up uh, disabled. I got this voice activated software where I would talk into a headset. I wrote like, I don't know, 40,000 words. No one's ever going to read that. When I moved to Bali five years ago, I wrote about half of a book and I realized that one wasn't going to be finished either. I knew that I was called to be a speaker and I didn't know what I was supposed to write about. I just kept writing and I didn't know how to write. That book is called Elephant. It's not coming to market anytime soon. I've spent years, years writing that book and I started writing another book. <laughs> it's a novel. I've never even read a novel. It's called Kokoro. I was in my home in Indonesia like two years ago. I'm trying to write this novel. They're building an apartment building next door. There's drilling all day long. I'm, there was tension in my romantic relationship. It just had this moment where I was just like, are these continued thoughts? This is not my dream. My dream is not to be alone in Indonesia in a random room writing a book that I don't know how to write. Um, there was a truth revealed within my relationship that was unacceptable to me. I looked in my mirror crying and I just looked directly in my eyes and I was like, why are you letting this be okay? This is not okay. I hopped on my motorbike and I came here. I drove an hour away to here to Sunday's Beach Club in Uluwatu. And I was praying the entire way, dear God, do I stay with him or do I leave him? Like, what do I do? I thought I was coming here to journal and decide if I was gonna stay in that relationship or not. By the time I got down here, the only thing that I cared about was bringing my spirit back to life. I realized I had like bled my spirit out basically in that relationship. I bled my spirit out being in that room next to the construction, writing this book that I don't know how to write. And all I wanted to do was call my spirit back. So I just started journaling. What would make me come alive? How do I bring my spirit back? And I didn't realize until that moment that I had done that, that I had let my spirit escape. And maybe you relate to this. Maybe it's been a relationship or a job or some sort of circumstance where you just bleed out your soul like I don't want to think about the relationship I don't want to think about that book I just need a break I need to reconnect to my spirit what would make me come alive that was my question I decided to start a new book <laughs> what book five book six and I was like this book that I want to write it is gonna be fun it is gonna be sassy I'm gonna enjoy doing it and the entire process is going to be fun hello to Manku have a kabar <laughs> Heartgasm. The book is called The Heartgasm Revolution. I went to the jungle and in six days the book flew out of me. It's stuff that I had studied for years, stuff that I had contemplated for years about the journey of the heart and how to heal a heart. And it was a super fun and super sassy experience. 
But two years later, this book, The Hargasm Revolution, is pretty much sitting in a drawer, unread, unpublished, just like the other things I've written over the past seven years. It's obvious something needed to shift if I was ever gonna break through and get my work out into the world in a greater capacity when it comes to speaking and writing and publishing books. Two weeks ago, I went to a mastermind. I asked both these professional speakers, what is your advice for an aspiring speaker? What is your advice? How does one become a speaker, right? These are the people who have what I want. How do you do the thing? The first woman said, you don't pick speaking. Speaking picks you, it's a calling. You answer a calling and you wait. It's about time and flow and surrender. And then what the guy said, you develop a methodology and a system and once you get your system, your six point system, your 10 point system, you keep delivering results. And as a result of delivering the results, you will get asked to be a speaker. And so I was like, I can see, I see the logic in there too. I see the flow and I see the logic and the plan. And both of those, and in both of those require waiting, waiting to do the thing that you, that I already feel called to do, to just show up and do the things. Start now, just do it, don't wait. Don't wait until they say you're ready. So everything I'm gonna be doing with you by my side is gonna be outside my comfort zone, outside the edge, expanding into, I don't know, we'll find out. It's already putting me in this creative zone, which I was craving for. And if you're an entrepreneur or you work at home, then you know what I'm talking about, about how lonely it can get when it's just you and your laptop. Uh, that's not my dream. My dream isn't to do all my soul work alone. My dream is to be out in community with people, showing up now, failing fast now, but not waiting until I'm ready, not waiting until somebody else says that I have what it takes to do what I already know in my heart and my spirit. It's time to do, deciding to live now, working the edge now. It's time to live. My new friend. Permisi anda gila juga? A little bit. Makasih banyak. My God, guys, it is so beautiful here. This is like jaw-dropping paradise. I had already planned on doing this series to share my story with you and come alive together. And two days ago, I found out that one of my friends is no longer alive. He suffered from addiction, just like me. And um, it's put a fire under my buns. Our days are limited. We don't know when we're gonna die. And what I found in my own experience and the people that I've worked with and spoken to, whether it was in 12-step communities or in my coaching practice, is that there's a tremendous amount of pain, emotional pain, underneath fueling that addiction. Maybe this is your story too, and that you have that pain inside of you. And what I have found to be a wonderful tool for PTSD and recovery from it, writing and speaking, sharing our truth with somebody, getting breaking free from that shame, and also writing it all down and getting clear on stuff. And so my invitation to you, you trust what's inside you, and if you have a message you want to bring to people, whether it is some tragedy that you've been through or you're also sober in recovery, we need your story. We need your story. You know, I sure as F needed other people's stories in order to have my breakthroughs. We need what's inside you. So I want to encourage you to come alive while we're on this journey together, to fully live, to unleash what's inside of you, to share your message, if that's what you feel inspired to do, to speak about it. We need what's inside you. Quite literally, some of our lives depend upon it. But do it because it's who you are. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely out of sight. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah. No, I don't want to waste what's left. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a beautiful day.